Hey, you already know who it is. It's your boy Charlie Clips, Harlem all day, every day, even when we outside, we still in the building. And you already know what it is, man. Real fans, real talk. You understand what I'm saying? I deal with real fans, real talk. Real fans, Realtalk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to a special, very special episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. We have one fourth of the URL team here with <laughs> us today. Beasley, who I would have to say is probably the most athletic member of the four <laughs> after recent uh, battles that have went down <laughs> on uh, on the URL stage. Um, but um, I got to say, you know, it's, it's great that he came. We really appreciate you coming through. I met him at the uh, Black Ice event, the, uh, the format too. And I uh, just reached out to that for a second. He said he would come and here he is right here in the studio with us. So we got a lot to talk about. And I got, I, I really, I got to start off with this uh, double impact because you had this ninja move where you did a cartwheel to a backflip, oh, jumped out in front of Kayshawn and DNA <laughs> to uh, break up the uh, potential fight that was going down. And I mean, I know, you know, fights, obviously they mess up the money, so you right. don't want any fights to happen. But what was going through your mind when that whole situation transpired? I mean, you know, it, it, it's like any other sport. Sometimes things get heated. You know, battle rap is a sport. You know, it takes, you know, our format is, is definitely uh, set like a sport with rounds and time yeah. limits and things like that. But sometimes, you know, just like in basketball, football, guys' emotions get the best of them. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and they, they get pumped up. And, you know, um, my main concern was just preventing anybody from actually swinging on each other. Because once it, you know, once yeah, they swing, that's... it's like... And it could turn into something even worse. Yeah, it could turn into something totally different. So, you know, I, I, I kind of felt that the temperature was going a different way for a split second. So... I just kind of wanted to jump in there real quick just to split the part. But I was just moving off a passion and <laughs> thinking like, oh, my God, no, we can't lose this venue. You know yeah. what I mean? You definitely got in there quick. The and you have a martial arts uh, oh, background. I mean, you know. You, a little something, you know. That's what I, that's what I mean, I guess you have to if you're yeah. doing the cartwheels. On. <laughs> no cartwheels. No, not, no cartwheels. You know, flipping in there ninja yeah. style to stop things. But, yeah. you know, just... You know, over time, over the years, you know what I mean? I train the different stuff, you know what I mean? So, Do y'all ever think about, you know, doing like the, uh, like how um, uh, they had the, the pool table in between mm -hmm. on the, uh, like you just I want know. the guys to be up in each other's faces? Have to. That's the excitement. That's the energy. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's part of the sport, being able to control yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what transpired the other day where there was a near incident is very rare. You know, mm -hmm. if you go back through all the years that we've been doing this, all the battles that, that we've had, you know, that's like an isolated incident. Yeah. It's not really... I it doesn't happen. think you about know, three. It happen, yeah, like three times yeah. out of like 500 battles. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like saying on the football field, sometimes guys get angry and grab each other's mask and drag them down to the floor, but yeah. it doesn't happen every game. You're not expecting to see that, so... It's just if like anything, anything it happens else. more often in sports than in battle rap. And exactly. most of the times they compose themselves. They're not looking eye to eye. You know, they're nodding their head. Okay, I hear mm -hmm. you. You know, and mm -hmm. then waiting, you know, thinking in their head what mm -hmm. they're going to come back with. Because exactly. if you're getting out of focus and you're not thinking about how you're coming back, you know, well, you're done. You, yeah, yeah. You're if done. you're worrying about turning into physical, you have lost exactly. So, and you guys are actually going to have the battle again. Yes. Are you are you at all nervous about? Um, nah, I think that you know, I've spoken to everybody, and everybody understands you know what they have to do, and you know they how they need to control themselves and act accordingly. Because I there wasn't one person that I could say is responsible. I felt that both sides did things that agitated the situation, mm -hmm. but I mean they've already spoken and everything is cool i've spoken to both of the guys they're just really excited to get it done with and do it over and actually complete it because it wasn't a complete battle yeah. mm -hmm. i mean it may have felt that way because you know um nwx wasn't on the winning side of that particular yeah. match but i mean we don't know what would have happened at the end you know what i mean because they didn't really get to finish the second right, round they didn't get to finish the, right and you don't know what would happen in the third and yeah. you know i mean i i definitely you know Gun titles definitely had a great first round and the it second did. round, but there's no telling what could have happened in the second and third. 
No, because right, I, I find that like, a lot of times you guys don't really say who you feel won the battle. So it's interesting mm-hmm. that you actually said that Gun Titles was in the lead on that one. Is that, like, do you ever tell tell your opinion on who wins, or you try to just stay completely? I try to stay buzz? out of it. You know what I mean? For some reason, people think like, well, because you know I'm the brand, I'm the company, so yeah. it's like if the company says favoritism, person one, then yeah. people take that in, and yo, know, you can't say that, or you kind of have to be, um, you know not have an opinion or, or you know, not be biased or, yeah. you know, state who you think won the battle. So you try to kind of keep those things to yourself. Okay. And what now, I know it's rough, but what happens, like, when you get mentioned in battles? Like, do you like do you ever feel any kind of way about that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's part of the sport. You got to take the good with the bad, you know what I mean? So they're going to say what they say, you know, but. Okay. You get the eyes, though. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, I've noted. All right. Okay. <laughs> now on this on this um on this card that they're gonna be they're gonna have this uh the battle go back. Can you tell us who else is gonna be on that card? Uh yes, 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 yes. So we're gonna have a great card, man. Actually I was a little apprehensive to say, but I mean I'll let an exclusive out on the show. Hey. Um, <laughs> so the card's gonna consist of um John Johnny Don. Okay. Versus Big T. You know, that's a, like an ongoing yeah. grudge match. That I'm, I'm actually time. very excited to see that battle. And then we also have um, Briz Rothstein. Okay. Versus Shotgun Shook. Okay. And I heard Shook was talking. He was definitely doing some talking. And then so rounding, out the, rounding out the evening, we got Math Hoffa versus T-Top. Hoffa. Okay. This is a good <laughs> and Math, who is actually Come one rapper back. who definitely... Mm-hmm. Mentioned you in the, in yes. the battle. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Matt. He actually did come through um, to the program as well. He mm-hmm. was at uh, the first Bowling for Peace basketball game. So shout out to Matt. Um, but it's, it's it's a lot going on with the URL now. You have like this. I guess the thing is, if it if it's not on URL, it doesn't count. Right. But you guys also are affiliated with a lot of other other leagues as well. So. Like, uh, um, if you guys do a We Go Hard, and mm-hmm. then, like, you came out to support um, Black Ice. Mm-hmm. So how how is it that, you, that it you know, you have the, it doesn't count if it's not on URL, but you guys still support the other leagues? Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's a tough question. But, I mean, I just feel that, you know, for, for me personally and for the impact that I see within the MC battle culture and where it stands, I think that, and, and many will agree that, URL has the biggest battles. It has the battles yeah. with the most impact. Like, you could take the same two guys and put them on any other league and it won't mean as much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's almost like watching Hulk Hogan in the Macho Man fight. You know, you want to see that on WWF or what's yeah. turning into WWE or The Undertaker exactly. in I was just going to use that X. analogy yeah. too. You, you, you want to see them yeah, in a certain place. Yeah, you don't want to see them in backyard wrestling. And I think that because we are the first people to actually document this form of MC battling, mm-hmm. and people are accustomed to seeing it on the Smack platform with Smack there and the usual people that stand around when the battle happens, psychologically you become, yeah. th- th- those are pieces of the puzzle. Those are the things that you're used to seeing and that you, when you have like a cult following of people that are into something, they want their message or whatever they're enjoying to be delivered in the same way after a while. So to go back to to answer your question, if you look at the impact of two MCs when they battle outside of the URL on another platform, it's mm-hmm. nowhere near the level. Not viewership wise. Yeah, well you're street so buzz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, movies. street buzz. So, you know, it's 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 just kind of something that we said, you know, in terms of doing our marketing mm-hmm. that we've said, but now I feel like the fans feel the same way. Yeah. And even the artists would tell you they feel the same way. If you look at a big artist, say for instance anybody, they'll take somebody that they would never take on URL on another league. Yeah. But you know they won't take everybody on URL that you present to them. They want the best and the biggest opponent because they know they have a chance mm-hmm. or the opportunity to make the most impact. So top five from URL versus any other battle league, and you'll take the five all you think from URL. I mean, who else is it? Who else is there? Well, I mean, I guess everybody from URL kind of floats around, but I guess maybe King of the Dot. You know, they have a couple of guys that don't battle on, on Smack. King King of the Dot is another genre of battle rap. Mm. You know what I mean? I think that battle rap is expanding just like music is expanding. 
you can't compare what Nas does to what Fetty Wap does. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you can't say that one is necessarily better than the other. It's all subjective. It's a matter of opinion but and yeah, preference like as to what one person likes. Okay. You know what I mean? But I think that just like how you have different types of rap music or, or derivatives of the original source of rap music mm. on the offshoots, it's the same thing with battle rap. You know what I mean? There's cultural differences that yeah. the MCs express, the, the attitude, the delivery, the style, the rhyme patterns, the aggression. They're two, diff they're two totally different platforms or two totally different styles of battle rap. So yeah. I couldn't, I, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fair to say that they are the same. Yeah. Now, is one, you know, you can enjoy both of them if you're a fan of the music because, you know, one day, you know, you might want to hear Jadakiss yeah. and then the next day you might want to hear Young Thug. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean that you can you can enjoy both of them equally, but they're, they're clearly two different things. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's why Disaster didn't have as much success coming to URL and battling? Hmm. I mean, I think he did well when he came over because he's a professional and he watches the culture. So I wouldn't say that he had a bad performance, but, but maybe the fans like he, didn't he take to him. Huh? Do you feel like he yeah. won the battle versus Rex? Mm, I don't know. That's a good question, man. I, I would have to really go back and watch it again. I haven't watched it in some time. It's been a few years. You know, um, I thought they both had high points in the, in the battle where they did well. I gave it to Rex personally myself, right. mm -hmm. but you know it is you know everybody's opinion is going to be different, and I know we got we got to we got to cut it a little bit, but I do want to ask you, um, Daylight, mm -hmm. is one is he coming back to to the URL, and right. two, is is he good or bad for battle rap? Wow. Okay. Is he coming back to URL? We've had a lot of discussions about having Daylight back. It is something that we're trying to work on, you know what I mean? We're just trying to make sure that the scenario is right for URL mm -hmm. and him. <clears throat> um, do I think he's good for battle rap? It depends. I, I think he is good for battle rap in the sense that he does create a lot of energy. I mean, I don't agree with everything that Daylight has done. <laughs> yeah. There are some things that His, uh, his I, comments I, I, about I'm Diddy against, and... Like, man, not even that, just, you know, the clan outfit and yeah. some of the other stuff like that. Like, I just... I don't see any humor in it, you know yeah. what I mean, personally. But I do think that he has brought some attention and he's found a way to market himself and make people talk, you know. So I think that he's a good example of maybe not taking his path because his path works for him. Yeah. But he's someone who decided that he wanted to be famous and figured out a way to do it on his own. So a lot, a, a good deal of why daylight is daylight is because of daylight. Yeah. Because it's not just he blogs, he makes music. If there's an issue or a topic that goes on, he has a video up the next day, that night. He capitalizes on every possible opportunity that he can. So I think he's a good example in terms of um, work ethic and hustle. You know, do I agree with everything that Daylight does? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? Am I entertained by some of the things he does? Yes. Will he come to URL? You know, once we reach an agreement and that's amicable for all of us, yeah. then we'll be more than glad to have him on the platform. Now, battle rap has come a long way over the years. Mm -hmm. Started on the ground, then you had social media, internet, YouTube, now even pay-per-views. You talked about venues before. Do you ever see it um, selling out like a MetLife Stadium and, and being on that level? Yes, I think that um, our growth has been exponential mm -hmm. you know, over these last couple of years. I mean, considering where we come from. Sold out quick. Being out on the street corners <laughs> stuff like that to actually selling out venues. You know what I mean? We've broken some records in some of the New York venues like Irving Plaza in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, payout to a promoter. Mm -hmm. Um the price point on our ticket is pretty high. It's, it's higher than your average artist. You know, there may be a show at Irving Plaza. Average guy might charge $40, $50 a ticket where we're charging 100 So it is uh, proof that we have a cult following. There are people there that will support it. We've done big events where we've had 2,000 or more people come out. But I think it just all goes in stages and over time. The more and more people begin to be 
come involved with it and understand it and actually turn it on and watch it. I think the audience will grow, and that's always been the goal to increase it to big stadiums and bigger platforms. So we're diligently working to take the next steps to go to bigger venues. But life obviously over eighty thousand. Yes, but let's do probably it. Probably starting with a basketball stadium at the twenty thousand level, mm -hmm. and even if it doesn't sell out, if you get five. The ten thousand is still a good night for the mm, venue. Exactly. So. You guys usually have lines like around the corner yeah. when they have an event. Now, do you do you think that <clears throat> someone will get the hundred thousand that Mook is asking for, and will it be the URL to to bring Mook back and to maybe battle a surf or hollow? Um, I mean, I just you know, it all depends. You know, the bigger that we get, <clears throat> you know, the more that sponsors want to come in and, and get that um urban eyeball that we have that mm -hmm. demo that we have you know it will take time i mean i i mean if you're asking me if presently we can afford something like that i would say no just because it's hard to get that type of money out of a building yeah. i mean if you want unless you do get for the barclays and stuff right like but then that. how much do you have to pay to get that mm -hmm. and then what if only 2,000 people show up, then, yeah. you're, you're, you're at a loss, and then everybody's guaranteed their money, and then and that's who just suffers? One bad and that's one one person. Yeah, one person on the card. Okay, and now if, you got, if you're thinking if that guy wants 100,000, anybody that's going to step in the ring to battle him is going to be like, yeah, I need to leave 40. Yeah. If he's getting 100, I want 40. And that's well, I want 30. One, and that's one matchup. Right, so. and that's one matchup where I could do a whole card yeah. for that same amount Plus. of money. Maybe even less than, right. than 140 So it's 000. like, you know, it, it, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, while he is popular and, mm. you know, he, he, he this is what he wants and this is what he feels he deserves, you know, we try to meet the demands <clears throat> and find a way where it can be economically sound for us to, to take that type of a risk. But mm. until we feel that we can actually recoup that and possibly profit off of it, because it's not even just about us doing it to recoup, because it's like, that takes a lot of work to raise that kind of money to yeah. do it, and then to go home and just be like, whew, did it for the culture. <laughs> it, it's going to sting. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, <clears throat> you know, hopefully, you know, this is a hot show, right? Yeah. Everybody watches the show. Maybe, you know, the, the, the president of Sprite is watching or something they like that, and be. they want to cut you us know. a check and, and make it happen. <laughs> well, yeah, well, listen, I want to see Pepsi. Mook back in the ring, so let's, let's, let's get, that, get that check. Let's go. <laughs> and I know, listen, they're telling us we got to wrap up, but I just got two really quick questions. Um, Big K, is he going to be back on URL? And mm -hmm. um, your top five right now. Oh, man. Is Big K going to be back on URL? I'm not sure yet. You know what I mean? Uh, when we last, you know, his last three words was that he was fine, you know, working in the capacity that he's working at with the other leagues. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if we're going to have Big K back. I'm not saying never, but we haven't really been speaking in terms of trying to get him back at this present time. He is a talented MC. And I'm pretty sure the people will demand it, so we may try to figure a way to get him back on the platform. Yeah. And um, in terms of my top five right now, man, it's always so hard because it's always changing. But I just like I like everybody, man. I like I know that's a generic answer, yeah. but um, we're hoping know. to get an actual top five out of here. Man, okay, I like DNA. Okay. I like uh, Loaded Lux. Okay. Um. I like Av. Okay, there's one of the new, new guy. guys. Yeah. Um, and I like T Top and Briz Rothstein. That's five. There you go. We got a no, top no five Charlie? from Beasley. Oh, Charlie's my man, but Charlie's like my cousin. <laughs> okay, so you're testing that one out. In this one, five. All right. All right, but it's time to wrap things up on the special edition of Real Fans Real Talk. I'd like to thank Beasley for joining mm -hmm. us. Thank you in for the having studio. me. Studio. Ladybug, uh, always a pleasure to have you on Thank the program. Thank you, as always. And uh, Trip Young, of course. Uh, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Real Fans Real Talk, and we'll see you next time, everyone. Realfansrealtalk.com Where Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Statsman